Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Tony Coleman, and today I'm going to show you how you can take an old cell phone and turn it into an IP camera that you can use inside your home. Some people use these also as uh, nanny cams or baby cams or what have you. Uh, I don't recommend using it to replace a traditional uh, security system, but it, they do work if you need something minor. Now, I've already set up this app to automatically start up when the phone starts up. That way, if uh, power goes out or something like that, as soon as it comes back on, it'll uh, power back up when I when I turn the phone on. But let me get out of this. It may take a moment because it's still booting up. The app that we're going to be using is called IP Webcam. It is a free app in the Play Store, and it's a pretty simple program. You can change your video preferences, if you want effects on it, power management obviously. Um, you can do your motion detection and sound detection. Uh, basically it starts recording as soon as it hears something or sees any kind of motion. Um, like local broadcast, I'll get into that. That's something you might want to do. Um, if you want to put a password on it, that way if somebody else was on your network, they couldn't access the camera without it. Um, usually not a big concern when you're within your own home network. Um, the Onvif support, that's just an open standard. I recommend leaving it on. There's a cloud streaming option. Uh, you can disable the notifications. Um, here, like I said, I've said, I've got to check for stream on device boot. And there's a start server option. You can set IP addresses and such inside of it, which I've already got done. So I'll just go ahead and hit start server. And basically, that's what it's doing right now is, as you can see, it's recording my office. I don't run this one in my office like this very often, but I uh, wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, this way I, I'd know if somebody came in. So I already know what the IP address is on that. And what I'm going to show you next is the app that I use to actually view this camera. So to be continued. Okay, so here in my bedroom I've got a Fire TV Stick 4K. Um, I've got a program called Tiny Cam Monitor Pro, which is also free. You can configure it. First I'll show scan network. It'll scan your entire home network. As you can see, it detected one. So we want to add it. It added the camera. So now we can get back out. Go to live view. And as you can see, you can now see my office streaming from my bedroom or from my office to my bedroom where I can monitor it. Now, this can support multiple cameras. I've, I've had three, four on here easy and um, it didn't bring my network down to a crawl or anything. Um, since it is on my Fire Stick, it's not actually recording here, but it is recording on the cell phone itself. Some people may find that less helpful because they, they fear that somebody might steal the cell phone and then they lose their video footage. You can set up a home in VR. Uh, I've used um, a program called Blue Iris in the past to set these up so that I can record video to it as well. That way if the phone got damaged or stolen in the process of a break-in or something, uh, it would still be recorded on a external device somewhere else. It works very well. Again, I would not recommend having this replace a full security setup professional-wise. Um, you would still want to use outdoor cameras for outdoors. I would recommend buying actual DVR equipment if you're wanting true home security. But if you only need a quick, simple fix or if you... Uh, wanted to watch like someone's baby or your own baby or something or just a young child maybe even you want to check in on your dogs periodically this would suffice for something like that um it also 
can run your device warm, so I would recommend keeping it in a nice cool area. Um, the good news is you can do this even with super old Android phones. I've used it with old phones that still had the single core 600 megahertz processor running Android 2.2.2. Kid you not, they work just fine. Uh, the only restriction you have there is you're gonna have limited storage space inside of it. So you definitely wanna have memory cards um, in the phone if, if you're wanting to record to the device. So that's how simple it is. You just go to the Play Store or even in the uh, Amazon App Store, you uh, download the, uh, the app to your phone that you're wanting to use to record or stream. And then you go to your Fire Stick and use the Tiny Cam Pro um, or the tiny cam monitor pro app and it's that easy to set up um, sometimes it won't auto detect if you try to manually uh, set the IP address or something you may have to configure the device um, like this one doesn't actually have anything on it now but it does give you a few other options like starting stopping I don't ever recommend using those um, here I can manage cameras and for example by editing this you can tell it like what you want to name it so I could actually rename that to like living room, garage, what have you. Camera brand, that's important. On cell phones usually it's best to select Android. Sometimes the others will work, don't recommend doing it. Um, camera model, IP webcam and then you can assign IP addresses to your device um, on the phone itself with the app and then you can enter it here so it automatically knows where to look but and if you set a password on the the phone in the app you can also put your username and password here on the login settings again I don't recommend doing that and unless you feel somebody else is going to have access to it that you don't want to have access I could actually watch this in my living room on my other Fire Stick. I can watch it in my bedroom. It's just advertising this across the network. I could even set the Tiny uh, Cam Monitor Pro up on my cell phone and watch it there. So that's how simple it is. You can do as many devices on there as you want. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments section. If you like my videos, please, please, please mash that uh, subscribe button because it does help content providers quite a bit to have those subscribers. And if you like the videos, definitely hit the like button. It does matter to us because that's how our videos get uh, displayed to other people. It's It shows Google that people do like them and that they actually want to see more of those. So don't just uh, move on to the next video. Please click that. So until next time, you guys have a good one.